Good morning. I'm Dr. Bill White again, and I'm going to talk to you this morning a little bit about supernumerary teeth. And uh, this uh, young lady has some other problems in addition to that, but it will be an interesting thing. I'll go through it as I'm going to cover the whole deal, whole uh, case where we worked on her. And then, uh, I wanted to say first that I am a member of the American Orthodox Society. I'm board certified in that, I, but I am a general dentist, and I've been doing orthodontics for about <coughs> like uh, 42 years, so uh, I'll just pass on some of the things I've learned in it, and I hope that uh, it's of some interest to uh, some of you. Uh, so anyway, let's get on with the uh, video. This is the, uh, just a minute here. I've got some problem. Okay, here's the little girl's facial structure. She's full in the face, and so we're gonna have to extract some teeth down the line and I hope you agree with extracting teeth but uh, you may not that's fine with me but I feel like you really do need to take some teeth out on some some of your cases so anyway let's get on uh, with this I'll go as fast as I can there's a lot of pictures that we will need to go through uh, her smile is uh, nice. She doesn't show a lot of a gum tissue here, so this is uh, good. Now this supernumerary tooth, we just kind of drew it off. Actually, it's a little higher up in here than this. Uh, we'll see it on x-rays in just a minute. Uh, we'll see other uh, things wrong here with the case. And, uh, and in addition to that, not uh, any terrible things wrong. Now this is 1991 when we started this young lady and it's going to be quite a it's going to be several years before we finish it. Now of course it's in the mixed dentition and we're going to go in here early and correct some of these things that need to be corrected early and then gradually work it out and uh, one of her teeth is kind of late coming in. Uh, Look on both sides, she's had some stainless steel crowns and other things. I don't want to take too much time on the re just the normal <coughs> orthodontic uh, problems that she's got. But uh, anyway, this is what everything looked like when I saw her. She's, of course, crowded down here on the bottom, and uh, there's not room for this tooth. Of course, that's a deciduous tooth. That, then these two molars, you're going to have your cuspid and two bicuspids you're trying to put in here. This just won't work. Now, they, this tooth got in ahead of time, or did it? Let's see. Uh, or maybe this is the lateral right here, and this one's crowded out too. I'll have to look at the x rays here in a minute. All right. Uh, looking at it cephalometrically, with that's just too full for me, regardless of what your drawings and your angles and everything come out. That's just too blooming full, and then it's extremely crowded in addition. So it's uh, you just need to take out teeth from time to time on on people, and look at the results when we get through with this. Now, see what it looks like. All right, uh, here is the supernumerary tooth, and there's a central root coming up on one side and another root over there, and this supernumerary tooth is right in this area, and it's growing up in this direction. I sent her to an old surgeon to uh, get the supernumerary out, and I think he took it out from the lingual side. He said it would have been easier if he'd have gone in from the floor of the nose and got the tooth. It was right up there close to the 
floor of the nose. That's the only one I've ever seen just turned absolutely upside down, uh, growing in this direction. Uh, but anyway, you're going to find supernumerary teeth in all kinds of uh, cases. You know, I had one young man that we took about three out. I don't have any pictures on him. I lost them or something. And then we started working on it, and in the middle of the case, he started some other supernumerary teeth, and they had to send him back to the old surgeon and get uh, those teeth taken out twice that we did that. Uh, anyway, that's the supernumerary tooth, and it wasn't a problem for me, but you see where these incisors were right here, and this tooth is way up, up above the roots of the incisor, and it was not too far up to the floor of the nose, uh, but he took it out from the palatal side right there. And then we see some crowding in there already, and we're not going to make a d decision on that right away, but later on we'll do that. Now here she is a little older, and we got the supernumerary out, and we are watching the case, and her face is still full. Uh, she's a little freckle face. Yeah, got a nice little dimple right over here. Uh, and a sweet little lady, and uh, we enjoyed working on her. Now this is 1994, and we haven't done anything really except uh, eliminate this uh, supernumerary tooth up here at this point, and uh, 94, the different side of the mouth. You can follow this, it's got this little defect in this upper right central there. You can follow that through the case. Now, <clears throat> extremely crowded. Uh, these cuspids are completely uh, crowded out in here. This is the first bias right here, and the second bias are underneath there, and it's your six-year molars back in this area right here. Uh, all right, that's 94. Well, let's see. No, this is 91. This uh, panorex right here was taken in 91, and here we've got this supernumerary we got to take out, and at that point we realized we were going to have some problem with getting the teeth in the mouth, so we there been informed on this, and we'll watch it. We take the supernumerary out, and we continue to watch the case for about till 94. Uh, that's that's 93. I saw her back and took pictures of it and stuff. Now, <coughs> here uh, we sh showed a case just the other day of my granddaughter that we did not want to extract and we had cuspids that were coming in over laterals like this. This one is really in there. Now, if you can extract teeth on a case like that where the cuspids are uh, swapping over and getting on top of the laterals over here, then if you can take out teeth, that is a big big help in doing those cases, uh, but we don't take them out when we've got somebody that's flat-faced, and so you have to work through it, expand them, and put all these roots together like this, and bring these teeth over and use the follicular movement. Uh, you should go back and look at that uh, uh, video on uh, cuspids crawling over laterals and what you had to do where it was a non-extraction case. Now this is an extraction case and look how easy it is if you've got this problem right here. And uh, let's go and see, this is a 93 x-ray. Now this is 94. And we hadn't done anything in 94 in this uh, cuspid is really, this is a lateral, it goes up there, it's still on the other side of this tooth, but it looks like it's absorbed a good portion of that lateral away. 
So we need to move. We need to get something going here. So in 94, we must have decided to get with it, to come in here and start doing something. All right, uh, let's see. This is 90, 10 of 94. Okay, we sent her in and got those teeth extracted. So they took the first buys out and the deciduous teeth if they were still on there. Now, watch this tooth, how it comes away, this one right here, how it comes away from this area and it, the follicle kind of moves it over to some extent. Let me back up to that uh, other film. Now see where that cuspid was completely over this lateral at this one. We took this away. It's not even touching it, but the follicle was touching it. Now when you come to this, uh, now back, back to this follicle. I want to explain something about it and show you something about it. Now in this picture, the follicle is squeezed up against this area here and it's squeezed against this tooth right here. Now, as soon as this, to this tooth right here is removed, you take the tooth out of the way, then this follicle is going to round out here and also round out over on this side, and that will move this crown in this direction. Also, this one is squeezed here and here. When this tooth is gone, this will round out bigger and push this tooth in this direction so it'll start heading down. Now watch that take place. This is looks like the eighth month, something like that of, the, of number uh, four. Now we'll go into the fifth. All right, then this is, these teeth have been removed now it's still 10 of 94, but the follicle, you see, pushed against this and that tooth right here, and it shoved this tooth over. This one right here hasn't done much yet, but it will shove it in this direction, and it'll start coming down. These follicles down here are pushing these over also, and these teeth will head straight into the mouth, kind of like a seared extraction case or something of that nature. So learn to pay attention to what these follicles, how they they assume a, a round shape because the, a round form will hold more material than anything else with the same uh, displacement and everything. So that's why planets are round and things that are hot drop the hot liquid it'll assume a round position. So if it hardens. And, uh, anyway back to this again. Now let's show one more panorex uh, and we'll see what happens to the tooth one more panorex and you see there's just a little bit of it holding on there. We come in and put a little temporary arch wire in there to hold that in place. It looks like we've got a step down arch in here and we talked about step down arches. This, this you notice I've got a spring on this arch right here. We're pushing this down in the front from the spring that's on this. So this step down arch would be like here. We raise it up and hook it to these teeth and it's pushing down on these lower anterior teeth. Now let's go back and look at this x-ray and you see the depth of bite here on this. So we come out of this six year molar, put that loop on this like that and then we're going to build this step down arch that comes out of here and we'll bring that down 
and actually the thing will be down here stepped up and then we'll bring it up and hook it on that teeth those teeth now watch what happens to these teeth as we put this step down arch in here now this is a important arch to learn how to make we've got a video on step down arches and you need to learn how to bend them and use them they're extremely useful you can open space close space intrude and the roots of the teeth tend to go with the crown as you expand or when you contract with a step down arch and uh, you need to learn how to do that uh, okay we're gonna go with the next x-ray now and see this tooth will gradually come completely off of there and come to, to this point right there almost without doing anything see now you see it's just holding on with a little bit here's the step down arch and it has brought these teeth down you see where they are right now they were up here somewhere and it intruded these teeth right here it works off of these molars you see that molar is slightly tilted back this direction but as it tilts back your occlusion from up above hits it however there's a baby tooth here and this one over here the baby tooth's gone so there's nothing much holding it so this one is tilted back further than this one right here that's still being chewed against. These are subtle little things that beginners or people that don't really sit down and think about what's going on here uh, don't pick up on this. But see how much more this one is raised up and there's nothing up above it much. This one over here was chewed against and it didn't raise up as much. So if you your occlusion is good and you chew on them you can intrude these teeth out here and use the muscular structure in here to do the work for bringing these teeth down uh, and that keeps you from opening the vertical dimension of the lower third of the face and that's an important thing to learn and so this video has something really pediatric dentist and anybody that's working on young people need to understand this preventive and interceptive stuff. Don't sit around and wait on these kids till they're 12 and 14 years old before you start them. You need to get in early to prevent things from happening in here. Now, let's, uh, I don't mean to fuss at you, anything, I appreciate you watching these. Uh, in the American Orthodox Society, we're interested in you doing really jam up good orthodontics. And uh, that's what we hope you get out of these uh, videos like this. Let's go to the next one. All right, the next one, <laughs> the teeth have just come in. I mean, lined up, we've still got a step down arch in this part right here because we've got a tooth down here that is not responding up here. Uh, really, we should have picked that up earlier and get rid of this thing here, the deciduous tooth, and get this tooth on in there because it's going to delay our finishing this case. And it's going to slow us down here for about a year. So anyway, we've eliminated the first bicuspids in here and uh, the cuspid is said again this is a second by it's coming in late so that delays us some it would have been better if we'd have picked up on this earlier and gotten this out of the way and maybe could have encouraged this but there's this tooth is not resorbing the deciduous tooth properly there a lot of times when this tooth comes out it won't have any root this tooth will be right up in here on it resorbing in the way so when you see this happening you know something's wrong here so we should have removed that earlier 
so it's going to delay us a little bit in the finishing the case up. Uh, now I don't know what, what that came in for. Now this is nine. This is 1996, and so we're being delayed. We could have finished the case, uh, you know, in '96 if it had uh, this tooth in, but we didn't get it in there. So now we wise up and we take the tooth out. Maybe we didn't see it. Uh, something happened there that we overlooked that, or they didn't come in, or something went uh, wrong. Uh, now here she's age 14, five after, and a lot of people sit around and wait till they're 14 years old before they start, or 12, and this would be a pretty much a mess if you had waited on them like that. So we need people working in the preventive and interceptive period in here. There's a lot of orthodontics should be done then, and uh, we've got some excellent pediatric dentists in our organization. And I mentioned Dr. Carapizzi yesterday uh, in the video, and Dr. Ed Gonzalez, and there's several other really good pediatric dentists. I used to teach with Dr. Jerry Laffer. He and I went all around over the country doing that. And Jerry retired on me, and uh, uh, I wish he had stayed in there. And, and uh, several other uh, good pediatric dentists have taught in the AOS, and uh, uh, there's a bunch of them in there now that I didn't mention all of them. So uh, we have some excellent general dentists that are really talented and uh, can teach you how to do some really good orthodontics. Now myself, I don't care about any of this uh, junky, uh, I don't want to call it junk, but uh, anyway, I don't agree with a lot of this stuff. Now here, this is coming on in, and it's 90, this is 1997, and she's 14 and eight months at this this point and it's been delayed. I should have gotten in here and got that tooth out uh, a year or two earlier than this. Uh, I knew there was something wrong or could have known it. And now it'll come on in and we may have room for the uh, wisdom teeth, I'm not sure. Now if this is real full and, and we're having problem, we can take these out but I'd like to keep these when we extract something in this area. We like to keep the wisdom teeth if at all possible, uh, especially if they grow a lot, we like to keep them. Now here it is in 19, I can't even, 98 I think it's 98. And uh, the tooth's in there so we gotta close this space so we'll be using this step down arch to close that up and uh, we'll close that and this up here and uh, finish the case out. So this is turned out uh, from the x-ray looks real good at this point. And uh, these teeth that look like didn't have roots, well they, they did. Uh, frequently your panorex will uh, mislead you a little bit on the problem in there and we have opened the bite you see these teeth were up here we've got them down here we did that with this this arch here now this one is just uh, kind of set maybe be a little bit down but not much but we got over jet and over bite and everything's about what we want finishing the case now here is the number 10 x-ray right here and this is 11 of 98 and it's uh, pretty well finished and looks like we've got room enough for the wisdom teeth it's a little bit shy over here but this looks better on the right side of the mouth so we'll wait on them to 
uh, whether extract them or not extract them. Okay, here is the uh, cephalometric earlier on, and I'm going to run through here. Is it down the way in 94? And here is the young lady, and there we are in the braces. Now, here is that step down, the step down arch that was intruding these teeth. So, there's a lot in this video. It's not just the supernumerary we took out that was headed up at, uh, to the base of the nose. And uh, we've got cuspids coming in and everything at this point. It's 95. And uh, we've still got, we're going to take out or get some of these deciduous teeth out of the way. They, the bicuspids are removed now. And I think this is a little, well, we still got the braces, 96, 96. Uh, and we have this tooth that hasn't come in. So we got a, this is the rascal that delayed us about two years, maybe a year and a half or something in finishing the time on it. So we should have picked up on that way back there. Uh, Alright, here we are in 97 and uh, still got that. See, that tooth has not come in yet. So we're waiting. We've got the space held open with this uh, step-down arch right here. Uh, the other side is pretty well finished. We got a little class 2 elastic. We lace the anterior teeth together and we'll close this space up above. This tooth still not there. It's 9 of 97. So we really messed up not getting that tooth out a lot earlier. And I blame myself. I just uh, didn't see it or didn't uh, well you're busy and you're working and you're seeing a lot of people but you try to do a good job of everybody and you have some good people helping you and uh, either they didn't tell me or I didn't look at that particular tooth in time so anyway that's 98 and now the tooth has got in in 98 so we go ahead and now here we'll show you the beginning this was 94 and here it is in 99 and that tooth finally got in there but I uh, uh, fault myself for not getting that out earlier and here's the anterior for 94 and here it is and I guess this is uh, 99 something that she's not doing a jam up job brushing her teeth and here's the other side, 94, and here it is in 99, 94, 99. Now look, we extracted these teeth and see the size of this arch. Now look at the arch here. We took the teeth out and the arch is bigger than it was and it's lined up good. Now, if you look at her facial structure, now we put a bite plate on this retainer because she had this little depth of bite, and this will stop the bite from deepening any further as long as she wears that. And so she'll keep it and use it at night where we wear it all the time for a while. So things are, we got to make some decision on these wisdom teeth back here before we stop looking at this patient. So you take on somebody like this, it's a commitment for sometimes six, eight, and further years that you're gonna watch this person. So don't think you can do it in a, a year and a half and slap them on the rear and tell them thank you, goodbye. You know, that you need to keep them and watch them and that's what uh, the general dentist who's got these patients 
has, the people has patience, and you're going to have them when they're uh, old, or at least uh, you both get old, you know. And uh, here this was in 94, and there it is in 99, you see. And here's the young lady's facial structure. Now, this is after extractions. And now you tell me this is not full enough for you? <laughs> it's plenty full for me. And it's plenty full for her parents and her and everybody. Now, if she gets up 40 and 50 years old, it'll flatten out some more uh, in here. But it's never going to be a dished in case like that. So people do need to have extractions from time to time, uh, but not as many as we used to take out back in the 70s. Here it is from the front. Looks darn good. And there's a smile, and it looks good too. So I'm going to hush up <laughs> on this. But I am saying that you need to think about it. If you're one of these people that think you should never take any teeth out, it, you know, my uh, mother worked for a labiolingual guy, and my uncle was a orthodontist in Atlanta, and they were labiolingual. They couldn't do anything with anybody if you took a tooth out. And so they assumed this position that God gave you these 32 teeth and you are supposed to keep them. Now of course they took out wisdom teeth but I know a lot of people with real crowded up situations are just too darn full in the face. So this was wrong and I hope uh, people realize that that there are cases that definitely need to have teeth removed and there's some of them that people took out teeth a few years back that is ridiculous that they did. Uh, I had a guy come t that came to our courses once and uh, he told me the reason he was here. He, he had sent his stuff to some uh, guy who was doing the orthodontics and, uh, and he called him up and said, well, my son's about 12 years old. He needs some orthodontic treatment. And the guy had never seen him. He said, well, take out his four by cuspids and send him to me, and I'll straighten his teeth up. <laughs> I thought, my God, <laughs> what, what is this? You know, and that has turned people against it, some of them so much that they never want to take them out. But you need to take teeth out on a few people, and that's a fact. So I'm going to <laughs> close with that, and I hope you get something out of this uh, video other than just supernumerary teeth. So I'll hush now and close this up. Uh, thank you very much for all watching, and we'll stop.